So my name's Claire Melford. I'm the co-founder and executive director of a, a not-for-profit founded here in the UK but operating uh, around the world called the Global Disinformation Index. I'm here with my uh, colleague Emanuele Brandi, who's just there. Wave your hand, Emanuele. And uh, we are working on trying to defund disinformation. The GDI was set up as a not-for-profit explicitly to try and break the automatic link that between um, content and, uh, or highly clickable content and ad dollars when that content is highly disinforming, hateful, uh, polarizing content. They're, we're trying to do this by uh, giving advertisers um, much more control over where their programmatic ads get placed. And in order to do that, there needs to be some sort of risk rating system that assesses domains in real time on their risk of carrying disinforming, hateful, polarizing content and feeding that directly into the programmatic ad network. The reason that uh, we think this is such a critical moment to do this is that because of the automatic link that if you can create something that gets clicks, you can get ad dollars through the programmatic network, disinformation has become a business. We're seeing more and more actors making highly polarizing, horrible content purely to generate ad revenue. And there are more, uh, and more and more case studies of people all over the world who are what's called surfing the policy line from a, from, that's a Facebook phrase, of uh, generating content that's right up there on the edge of being taken down because it's engaging, because that will get them the most clicks and the most ad dollars. And the evidence is mounting about the real-world harms that disinformation causes, whether it is um, loss of trust in governments or loss of trust in science, in health professionals, uh, through to uh, increased radicalization of people and even terrorism. There's more and more examples now of people uh, starting out looking at some, you might call it, um, lightweight disinformation, maybe a bit of flat-earth conspiracy stuff or, or Bigfoot conspiracies, and progressing down a radicalization funnel towards being um, active shooters in the US, for example. Many manifestos, at least three manifestos of terrorist shootings in the US have been directly linked to content they've seen online, and the path of radicalization is more and more well understood. And with online advertising spend uh, set to increase, um, this, is, this is becoming uh, an arms race. The, 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 the incentive to create more and more polarizing content to get more and more ad dollars is only going to increase. So how big a problem is it? Um, nobody knows. Nobody knows how many untrue things are on the internet. Probably quite a few. Um, but what we have done at Global Disinformation Index is amassed uh, a database of about 20,000 disinforming domains from a variety of um, sources around the world and estimated uh, using some very broad assumptions, the amount of ad dollars that would have gone on to those websites. And these are, in large part, pretty nasty websites. And that's the amount we found on, or we estimate, on 20,000 domains. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, because 20,000 is not all of them. So any system that's going to give a risk rating to domains in real time, in order to give advertisers control over where their ads end up, needs to do three things. The first thing is it needs to be able to cope with scale because there are 1.7 billion websites out there. Not all carry ads, but um, that number increases by thousands each day. And um, any system that we have has to be able to deal with the long tail and the, and the sometimes ridiculous and highly unpleasant uh, scale of some of this clickbait and damaging content. And, this really unpleasant website used to be quite popular in the US, and you can only imagine what Qatar Airways would have thought of being next to that particular piece of content. So anything that has a risk, anything that's trying to risk rate domains has to be able to cope with scale. The second thing it has to be able to do is cope with nuance, which obviously AI computers are not good at doing. This is a, a clip from RT. RT, as I'm sure many of you know, is uh, an outlet of the Kremlin in, in Russia, and alongside lots of bona fide news, um, most, most of RT content is bona fide news, they intersperse conspiracy theories and Kremlin-led information operations about things like um, the UK government poisoning the Skripals in Salisbury themselves to distract all of us from Brexit, or 
the Dutch downing uh, Malaysian Airways uh, MH17 flight um, for some reason, or um, you know, the Americans starting a coup in Bolivia, I think was last week's one. Um, so no AI system is going to be able to detect that sort of subtle nuance of particularly politically motivated disinformation. So any system we have has got to have nuance built into it, and that's going to mean um, not just a straight AI system. And the third thing, any system that's going to risk rate disinformation and hateful polarizing content has to be able to do is it has to be able to look forward to what is going to be the next narrative, what is going to be the next information of the campaign, what is the Kremlin going to come up with next, what are the um, disinfo merchants going to come up with next. And this is a, a good example from, uh, well actually this is a, a, a screenshot from yesterday, but 5G at the beginning of this year, I don't think anyone would have guessed that fifth generation mobile phone technology was going to be a Russian-led disinformation campaign, but it was. And in a single week in May, the narratives about 5G giving you cancer, being a government surveillance technique, being uh, the takeover of American technology by the Chinese, being an environmental disaster that downed flocks of birds in Russia, uh, the Netherlands, sorry. Those narratives spread hugely. And this very um, complicated graph is some al analysis that GDI has done looking at how those narratives get spread. And this was a single, what, almost a 10-day period in May this year when across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Stop 5G, the hashtag Stop 5G went from basically nothing to millions of followers in a single week. So it's clearly an amplified campaign. And you obviously don't want to end up next to that stuff, but how are you going to know that unless the risk rating system that you're relying on has not only the scale to cope with the long tail of the internet, the nuance to cope with um, subtle, politically motivated disinformation, but also the foresight, the intelligence, to understand what's going to come next. Because this stuff changes all the time. So that's what we're trying to do at the Global Disinformation Index. We're making a risk rating system that is based both on human and artificial intelligence. And I usually use the metaphor of a cake to describe it. It's based on three layers. So at the bottom of it is the AI-powered uh, structural uh, classifier. And that looks at uh, metadata features. It looks at um, how the site is constructed, the technologies that have been used, and very hastily created junky sites um, they often have telltale features that you can detect with, with algorithms. The middle layer is, what is also AI-powered, but it's, um, it's based on the lexical features of the site. So what it's looking for is, uh, what, is the, what is the format? It, does it look like a news site or does it look like a blog? What is the content? Is it uh, anti-vax content? Is it um, flat earth conspiracies? Is it Bigfoot? What is the... Um, targeting, so not um, who do they want to read it, but who is the sort of victim of the, of the vitriol on the site? Is it anti-LGBTQ? Uh, is it um, anti-Jewish? And then lastly, what's the language? Is the tone um, neutral and newsy, or is it hyperbolic? So that the middle layer, AI-powered, but trained with a, um, a fairly sophisticated set of uh, language tags. And then the icing on the cake is a manual uh, human review, which we are piloting using about um, 30 or 40 websites in a couple of countries. We've just finished the pilot. And we have picked the UK and, the, and South Africa as the pilot countries. And we, pilot, and we assess them using both analysts, using a framework of um, questions to assess flags of disinformation, and also an expert survey. So ooh, this doesn't come out nice when you change it to PowerPoint. Sorry. It looked nicer when I last saw it. Um, so the, the, the manual uh, review of the top 30 sites in the UK uh, and in South Africa contained um, structural assessments, which I mentioned before, the AI-powered stuff. It contained content assessments done by analysts. So they were assessing a blind articles. They were not able to see which publication the articles came from. And they were assessing against various things like uh, sensationalism and hate speech and impartiality. The analysts also assessed operational features. So they uh, were looking on websites, and this obviously is not blind, uh, they were looking on the 30 websites for policies. Did, d is there a stated policy of editorial independence on these news sites? Is there a, a stated uh, ownership structure on funding? 
Um, are there safeguard, uh, um, safeguards in place for complaints, etc.? And then the last part, the last pillar that we piloted was a survey run for us by YouGov with 100 experts in both countries looking at um, different questions of how clickbaity were the titles, where the titles matched um, content, um, and that sort of thing. So we, we've finished those uh, pilots. And my uh, sort of the closing thing, the closing thought I'll leave you with is that at GDI, we think that uh, just getting to better block lists isn't, is really the answer to yesterday's brand safety challenge. The disinformation challenge, the, the scale of the, uh, both the volume and the perniciousness of um, hateful content, polarizing content, socially divisive content, health misinformation, extreme radical, radical content is just going to increase. And just finding more and more websites that already have it is never going to provide a sufficient um, brand safety solution. You have to have this forward thinking understanding of how disinformation operations work in order to be able to um, give a realistic risk rating of whether a domain, whether a website is going to be a safe place to place an ad. So what my ask for this room is we're, we've finished our pilot but we really want to know uh, whether it's any good, whether it's good enough and it works in the way that uh, you guys as advertisers want to use it. So I would be really keen to hear from anyone who would be willing to look at both the automated piece we've built, the way we tag sites, whether the, the, the tags that we use make sense, and the manual uh, review of websites we've done, and give us feedback on, whether, on how you would want to consume a disinformation risk rating alongside your other brand safety criteria. So if there is anybody who would be willing to give us feedback, please come and see either Emanuele or me. Thank you very much for your time.